Sol Weta Omnes. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We may be on break for school, but the Latin grind never stops. Um, also, we're getting to a very exciting part in uh, in Caesar that I like, so I'm gonna gonna speed my way there. That's still a couple of videos away, um, but we'll continue to work our way through. Um, last time, we had gotten rid of. Uh, I guess you could say, uh, Taturius and Kata's legion. It's been, um, basically destroyed. Uh, there have been a few survivors that have escaped and made it to Labienus' uh, camp in, in 37. They were able to escape, but, you know, it's, it's... It's a handful of people, probably, maybe a few dozen. Uh, from the original, like, Legion and a Half, I think, that we had there. So there was about, uh, I mean, 8,000 men or so. Six to 8,000 men, and, and they're just wiped out. So, uh, Ambirix wastes no time. He's going to go, uh, you know, spurred on by this victory. He's going to go on and try to convince other people to join the cause, which will make it all the easier uh, to take out the rest of the camps. And so he is going to pick on Cicero's camp next. So, um, at this point, he has persuaded the Nervii to kind of join the cause, which should be close to Cicero. So, we pick up in section 39 of Book 5. Itaqua confestim demisis nuntis ad Catrones grudios lauacos plumoxios gadumnos que omne sub eorum imperio sunt quam maximus manus possunt cogunt est de improviso ad Caceronis berna ad volant nandum ad eam fama de tituri morta perlata. So and so, um, immediately at once with speed. Um, with messengers sent out, um, scrambled in, in some sense, right? And that kind of sent out, sent out to all these different people, to the Catrones, the Grudii, the Lawaki, the Plumoxii, the Gaidumni, who all were under his power, um, with messengers sent there. Um, they gather together as great, of you know, as, as many groups of people, Manus here, referring not to a physical hand, but to the, uh, to bands of men. So, um, as many bands of men they're able to gather, they gather, and, uh, they fly to the camp of Cicero f from an unseenness, right? It's kind of like with speed, basically, kind of suddenly... Um, literally from an unforeseen point, I guess. Um, they fly to his camp. Um, the camp, I think Hiberna is going, how do I want to do this? Um, yeah, then we get this long out of absolute here. With rumor about the death of Taturius not yet carried to him. So, Cicero does not yet know about what happened to uh, Taturius and Cotta. Hold on. I will get out of there. Cat upset to be trapped in the room with me as I teach. All right. So, let's go take on Cicero's camp. Huic quoque acidit, quod fuit necesse. Caesar's, one of Caesar's. More popular phrases. Ut non nulli milites qui ligni, uh, lignationis munitionis qua causa in silvias discaesent, repentino equitum adventu in ciperentur. All right. It also happened to this one. Um, I think you could have that referring to the. The camp is technically plural. I think it's refer, going to refer to Cicero. Um, it happened to this leader, what was, uh, what was necessary to happen, that several soldiers who had headed out into the woods, causa lignationis munitionis, with the cause or for the sake of wood gathering, 
of gathering lignus, so of wood gathering, and munitions gathering, so wood for all purposes. Um, several soldiers um, said, uh, left to go do that. And those several soldiers um, who had left to do that, they are, uh, they are intercepted by the sudden arrival, oops, by the sudden arrival of a cavalry. Uh, and we've seen this happen a couple times, right? So this phrase, perhaps unnecessary, but we've seen this before, right? Soldiers um, are out gathering grain, they're gathering wood, they're gathering some sort of supplies, and then suddenly um, they get overtaken by a uh, by an enemy force. But Caesar here not able, uh, not here, not able to ride to the rescue, so they're gonna have to find some way around it. Let's see how they have, uh, how they manage. He's Kirkomentis Magnamanu. Eborones nervi aduatuki at quorum omnium soci clenties legionem apugnari in Cipiunt. So, um, this definitely uh, definitely an ablative absolute with these men surrounded. Uh, magna manu ablative here. You could have this as an ablative of means with Kirkwentis surrounded by a great band. Um, you could also have this enablative of means going, I think, with, um, in Kipunt Apugnari. They begin to attack with a great band. Um, I tend to want to put it where it's more close to the ablative absolute, so I tend to want to put that together, though, normally I would have put it in between Heese and Kirkenwentis, personally. Um, so anyway, with them surrounded by this great band, the Eberones, the Nervii, the Aduatuki, and of all of these men, the uh, associates and the clients of all of them, uh, began to attack the Legion. So, um, a whole lot of Gauls attacking a few Romans out to gather wood. Our men quickly, oh, sorry. I need to do the Latin. Nostri caleriter ad arma cucurre, uh, concurrunt walum descendunt. That was a short sentence. Our men quickly ran to their arms, kind of hurt, rather to, ran to their weapons. They climbed the wall or mounted the rampart. Notice the ascendaton here, the lack of connectors to kind of speed up the process. Um, they run, they mount. There's no, we're not even delaying for the word et. We just do these actions very quickly, very swiftly, emphasizing the speed. Aigre is dies sustentator, quod omnem spemostes in caleritate ponebat, atqua hanc adepti victoriam in perpetuum se fore victoris confidebat. This day, the day, is sustained weakly, poorly. So the, the Romans are putting up a fight, but it's not great, right? Um, because the enemy was putting all of their hope in speed, in caleritate, and having obtained this victory, this is a kind of a, a future idea, it, kind of like if they obtained this victory, they believed that. So the adepti here is going, it's, it's a perfect participle, so it's going to happen before another verb. In this case, it's not happening before ponebat. It's not even happening before confidebat. Um, it's happening before fore. Having obtained this victory, they believed that they would be victors. They would be, yeah, they would be victors in perpetuity, forever. So this is... Um, the victory hasn't been attained, but having obtained the victory, they would be the victors. So, there you go. Alright, 40. I'll do one more section. That first section went quite smoothly. Metuntur ad Caesarem confestem ab Cicrone literae magnis propositis primis si pertulisent. Obsessis omnibus vis, misi intercipi untor. So, um, 
things are sent to Caesar immediately uh, by Cicero, or perhaps even from Cicero. Uh, we get the subject finally here, literai. Um, I think... So, litera, a singular, um, the word in the singular, litera, means a letter, as in a letter of the alphabet, as in that is a litera. Um, in the plural, it means a letter, a singular letter, a message, um, an epistle, if you will. It, it could perhaps refer to the plural here. I think the idea is... Um, going to be plural based upon the rest of the sentence. So I, I, I want to translate as letters are sent to Caesar immediately from Cicero, ablative absolute, with great rewards promised or proposed, set forward, if um, they should deliver them. So if the messengers should deliver these letters, they'll get a great reward. Then you get this ablative absolute um, and the result of these letters being sent out. Um, with all of the roads besieged, with all the roads perhaps blockaded, those people having been sent, that is the messengers having been sent, are intercepted. So this is why I want to take it as multiple letters. If it were just one person taking one letter, you would have Mises. Um, but since Misi is plural, I can't imagine you're having like four people deliver one letter. So, I assume that this makes more sense to translate as the plural. Also, I, I mean, the fact that he, Caesar puts mituntur first might emphasize that, because you definitely see that that's a plural verb. Um, so, even though elitori, it's like glasses or pants uh, in English, where even if you're just are wearing one set of glasses or one uh, set of pants, you're still using the plural. Um, but you're definitely kind of clue, uh, kind of clued in to wanting to use a plural here. So perhaps um, why that's first, as opposed to literai, which you're like, oh well, literai, yeah, in the plural that just stands for one piece of paper. So all right, noctu. So letters are sent, they're intercepted. Shame. Noctu ex materia quam munitiones casa comportaverant. Tures ad modum centum et viginti excitantur incredibili celeritate, quad deesse operi videmantur perficiuntur. At night, from the material, referring primarily to the wood, from the material which they had gathered for the sake of munitions, from that material, towers up to 120 ad modem. Um, accounting number here in this case, up to 120. So towers numbering to 120 are erected, are built, are raised up. Um, exquito is the verb you use when you want to wake up somebody, right? You wake up somebody, you exquito them. Um, so we're, we're not waking up these towers, we're, we're getting these towers up. They are built, you can just translate this built, with incredible speed. Um, which, yeah, 120 towers in one night, that's quick. Those towers, which seemed to lack work, and this, um, so this is indirect, indirect statement, right? They, more, more or less, they seemed to lack, kind of indirect statement, um, they seemed to lack work. So towers which are not completed yet, they're half built. Um, so it sounds like brand new turrets are built up to 120. And those which seemed to basically need repairs or need work, they were finished. So that's a lot of towers made in that time. Um, so, I mean, they're not huge towers, right? They're not like 10 stories tall or anything like that. Um, you figure maybe they're, they're three or four stories tall. They're more of a scaffold rather than like fully armored towers, I imagine. More kind of scaffolding on the inside of the walls. Basically something to give you a vantage point over the walls. Give you somewhere to stand as you're shooting bows and arrows at, or, or throwing spears at the enemy. Um, also, if you've got 5,000 men in this camp, um, you got 50 people working very efficiently. 
um, per tower, not too hard. Um, you know, 50 people to build a, a three-story kind of scaffolding and that you could do it if you've got the materials, I think. And again, Romans, like every night they're building a new camp. Like they know what they're doing. Um, so definitely sounds impressive. And, I mean, Caesar even admits it, right, with incredible speed. Um, but th they're able to build quickly and they've got a little extra motivation. Hostes, postero die, multa maioribus coactis copis, castra opugnant, fossum complent. The enemy, on the following day, with much greater forces gathered, um, so <laughs> apparently they've added to their forces in the, in the last 12 hours or so, they attack the camp, they fill the ditch. So, again, look at the uh, the lack of connecting vowels. There's no et here, right? They attack the camp. They fill the ditch. There's no et in between. We get this asyndeton again, uh, kind of emphasizing the speed at which uh, these actions are done. They arrive at the camp and immediately start filling in the ditch. So, in front of the, the walls, right, the walls are nine feet tall, say, um, for this camp. But then in front of these walls, you're going to have, like, another ditch that's, like, four or five feet deep or something um, that might also be sp uh, filled with, like, spikes. So um, if you want to be able to effectively at attack those walls, you're not going to be willing to fall into the pit with spikes. So uh, they fill the ditch. Eodem ratione qua pridie ab nostris resistitur. So... Um, with the same reason, with the same kind of reckoning, with the same calculations almost, um, by which they had on the previous day, it is resisted, I assume like the attack on the camp, it's again weirdly passive, it is resisted by our men in the same manner, perhaps, for Ratione, um, in the same manner, in the same method or, or, or counting or something like that. So, quickly running to arms, mounting the walls, throwing spears and arrows. Alright. Hoc idem reliquis denkeps fit diebus. Um, <laughs> this same thing then happens on the remaining days. Reliquis diebus. Ablative of time when. So, it's, it's just the same thing's happening every day. Um, the enemy comes, they attack the camp, our men, or the, the Romans, defend themselves and push them away. And then on the next day, it starts all over. Um, definitely not going to be good for the Romans, right? They can't easily get out to get supplies, food, munitions and whatnot. They've got, they, are they going out every night to unfill the ditch to, you know, at least give the enemy something to do, like, definitely not good. Um, and we can see that the Romans are doing a lot of work throughout the whole day, right? Nulla pars nocturni temporis ad laborum intermittitur, non agris non vulneratis facotas quietas dator. Nulla pars. No part of, <laughs> I love, like, this, like, very weird way of saying it. No part of the nocturnal time. <laughs> okay. So, no part of the night, right? So, no part of the nocturnal time is interrupted for work. Or is, like, it let is passed by for work. Is skipped? Maybe skipped would be a good way um, to translate intermittent to here, right? Um, there's no intermission. They're constantly working. No part of the night is overpassed or passed over to labor. An opportunity, um, the faculty, right? The opportunity of rest is given not to the sick, not to the wounded. So you're sick with, you know, or whatever you might be for eye grease, right? However, you might be incapacitated, be it from sickness or, you know, greater injury. It doesn't matter. You're finding something to do. You're at least... Holding a lantern for people, I imagine. The same for war, uh, the wounded people. It's like, you're not dead, you're working. Um, 
Because if you don't work, you might be dead the next day. All right, look at all these really short sentences by Caesar. Very um, quick to read. Quicumqua ad proximi die apugnationem, opus sunt noctu comparantur. Multa praeustae sudes, magnus moralium pilorum numerus instituitur, tures cantabulantur, pinae lore caequa ex cratibus atexuntur. Oh, good. All of these words that I don't know what they mean. I, even with the translation, I don't know what they mean. So, um, so, whatever things opus sunt are useful. Um, or are needed, perhaps. Whatever things are needed, um, kind of like for the attack on the next day, um, the, for whatever things are needed on the closest, you know, on the, for the attack on the closest day, those things, whatever they are, they are gathered at night. So, it's night time, the enemy goes away, Romans go out, gather wood, um, it, and whatever else, food, whatever they can. Um, I want, do I want my verb? Is it just, pri do I want it to be priest? I assume, I think many, um, I believe today's are sp uh, spikes. Um, in this case, I'm going to pull out my dictionary. I know like it, it's, these are defensive terms for the thing. So sudes are beams, piles, stakes. Many stakes are priustide. They are burnt at the ends. Um, what this does is it hardens the wood, uh, I believe. So if you make a spike with a, a pointy bit, you're, you, you burn it and it makes the wood harder and therefore sharper, or at least it's not going to... Um, lose its form as easily so um many spikes are pre-burned or yeah i'm gonna take that as the as the verb here they are pre-burned praeustai sunt um a great number of of wall spears are created are built um wall spears these would be javelins or spears that you would throw from the wall and again like i said uh like i know what these things are but i don't really know what they are so how's it do you, you know is it bigger than a normal spear because you don't have to like carry it out into battle i don't know so um many spikes are kind of tempered if you will um a great number of wall javelins are acquired instituitor Towers are contabulated. Uh, towers are, are are stacked up, right? And so again, I'm kind of imagining scaffolding here, where you have um, you build up a, a floor, right? You go up five, ten feet. You build that. Then from that, you build up your next scaffold, and then you build your next scaffold, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Pinae loricaiqua. Um, parapets and ramparts. Let me. <laughs> Yeah, pina is translated as battlement or parapet. Um, Lorikai are parapets or breastworks or defensive wall or screen. So, other defensive types of things are woven from uh, from reeds. So, they're making all sorts of different defensive structures. Stakes again for putting in the ground. Um, to make it a little bit more dangerous to approach the wall, javelins to throw from the wall, towers to throw down from upon, um, and then these shields or kind of walls that you can hide behind on the tower to then throw from and duck behind, and that sort of thing. So all of these things are gathered. Cicero himself. We get a cum clause. Uh, I guess I should do the Latin. Ipse Cicero, cum tenuissima valitudine asset, ne nocturum quidem sibi tempus ad quietem relinquebat, ut ultra militum concursu ac vocibus sibi pacer cogaretur. Cicero himself, and then we get this cum clause, um, and, and whenever you get a cum clause, again, you're, it's never wrong to translate cum as when, but uh, I do think it's important to look ahead 
um, to see is it just as simple when cum clause a cum I believe cum circumstantial is it better as a, a cum causal like does this act does this cum clause create the next event does it happen at the same time in the next event or is it happened despite that a uh, cum uh, adversative i think um so is it when since or although those are your three ways to translate cum when since or although i think here it's although cicero although he was with very thin health literally right i'm translating it very literally with very thin health ablative of description ablative of, of characteristic so he's being described with this ablative uh very thin or very weak very frail health so cicero is sick at this point um although he was not of the best health um nay here is not the opposite of ut. Ne here is going with quidem, and this emphasizes the word in between ne and quidem. Ne quidem translated as a unit as not even. And again, it's really stressing this word um, as opposed to any other, as opposed to perhaps the opposite of this word. So not even the nocturnal time for himself was he leaving for rest. So I translate that very weirdly. I'll, I'll go back. So Cicero, even though he was of poor health, was not even kind of holding back or not even allowing the night time um, as a time for rest for himself. So he's sick. Sure, he'll work during the day, but um, even at night, even at night, right? Nay, quidem. So he's not even skipping the night time. Um, he's constantly working. Um which is what you want to see in a general, right? In a leader. You want to see them putting themselves in the same kind of situation that their subordinates are. Um, and this obviously, like, has a positive effect on soldiers, right? So he was doing all this, and then you get this result clause with the ut. Uh, I'm taking it as a result clause. With the result that um, he was forced to spare himself um parker takes a dative he was forced to spare himself by the running up ablative of ablatives of means here by the running up and the voices of his soldiers um so he's constantly working and his soldiers are like literally like running up to him and like shuffling him back to bed or something in the night right so it's like no no, no you need to rest because, yeah, you want the general to work, you know, to feel like he's in the, the thick of it with his men. But also, if you die, then who's going to take over? And, and you're the leader for a reason, right? So um, they do realize that he needs to take good care of himself. Ultra, um, moreover or furthermore, with the result that moreover or kind of in the end, perhaps, he is forced to spare himself. Uh, it can also mean something like voluntarily, um, uh, and you could perhaps have it going with like concurso. Uh, he is forced to spare himself by like kind of like the voluntary running up of his soldiers uh, and the voices, the shouts, the calls of his uh, soldiers. So, um, moreover, or on the other hand, or voluntarily, ultra has a couple of different translations. So, pick the one you think works best for you. Okay. That gets us through 40, and we'll go ahead and stop the video there, or at least end our reading for now. Um, we've got a couple sections left until my favorite part, so that'll be ooh, maybe if I can keep my schedule, maybe Wednesday. We'll see. We'll see. All right. If you have any questions, as always, comment down below. Shoot me an email. Um, hope you're enjoying your break, if you are in fact on break right now, and I hope that you have a good one. I will see you all next time, wall later.